These two collide here on the last day of January and a series that we told you has been ultra competitive since Mike Young took over at Virginia Tech. He's now in his fourth season. Jim Laranega said to us today at Shootaround, they're not just close games, they're one possession games every time. <laughs> For us, it's a good thing. I get the sense that neither one of these coaches uh, like how it has gone down to the wire, but I would expect the same tonight as well. Both these teams match up evenly. Norchad O'Meara wins the tip back to Nigel Pack, and Miami has it for the first time. It's 16 and 5 overall. 7 and 4, we showed you in the ACC. That's tied for fifth. Coming off a three point loss on the road at Pitt, and the first miss from Wooga Poplar, and now Virginia Tech with it for the first time. Once again, the freshman MJ Collins starts. Yet again, no Darius Maddox. We send him our best out for a second straight game due to a family matter and not with the team. And there's Grant Bazzilli going to work and a chance at three early on for a guy who's been really good these last two wins for the Hokies. Beautiful pick and roll. Uh, you can't do it any better right here. Sean Padula comes off. Nice little dump off pass. And we talked about Basili uh, in the open. He's a guy that scores on all three levels. You have to honor him popping out. That time he rolled to the basket. Beautiful pass by Padula. Excellent offense early by Virginia Tech. So more of the same from Grant Bazzilli yesterday named ACC Player of the Week, the Wright State transfer, 24 against Duke, 25 against Syracuse. Mike Young told us at shoot-around today he is playing great. As you check out the Miami starters, Isaiah Wong, the top scorer, Jordan Miller a hair behind him, and Pack, as you said, has logo range. Miller on the baseline, and the lefty scores. Well, we give a lot of... Uh, Recognition to Pack and Isaiah Wong, but I feel like Jordan Miller, he's a guy uh, that's under the radar. That time scoring with the left, uh, he is a pretty much a three level scorer, and I love his ability uh, to create matchup problems for opposing teams. Shot clock below 10. Here's Sean Padula, top scorer for the Hokies, and he walks with it against a Miami trap. Hey, we mentioned Darius Maddox. We want to send him our best back home in Maryland, we said, for a second straight game. And Mike Young said to us today, we think we'll have him back very soon, but he said it's way more important than him playing against the Miami Hurricanes to yeah. be with his family. Bigger than basketball, and credit Mike Young and staff worrying about that young man's well-being uh, as opposed to the game. Uh, but take a look. Again, we're seeing early on uh, some great pick-and-roll offense by both teams. And back to my comment about Miller, that's a great a read off the pick. And he stepped up and nearly swiped it from Justin Mutz, who pivots in the post. Collins cuts and finishes. Great pass out of the double team. Justin Mutz, one of those guys that does a little bit of everything for Virginia Tech. Miami was a team that will double in the post, so Virginia Tech's going to have to be very good out of the double teams. That time, Mutz makes a nice little pass that led to a layup. He was playing Syracuse over the weekend, so of course, he threatened a triple-double. Had one of them last year. Omir on the glass and a stick back off his offensive rebound. If you have not seen uh, this young man play, uh, he is one of the best rebounders in college. Jim Laranega said his uh, pursuit of the ball on the offensive or defensive glass is relentless. So is Isaiah Wong, who stripped Collins in Wong Hoist. Can't hit. Padula tried to get it around Nigel Pack. Instead, Poplar too strong in the mid range. Well, pick and roll defense going to be key for both of these teams. They like to run a lot of screen actions. And again, right there, no hedge by the big. And all these guards on both sides are very good. That time, Sean Padula, beautiful drive to the basket. So the leading scorer for Virginia Tech, Sean Padula, the sophomore from Oklahoma, who dealt with foul trouble against Syracuse over the weekend, only played 17 minutes and only scored six points. As Miller turns it over for the Canes, the Hokies push. And it's last touched by Omir and stays with the Hokies. Yeah, good job that time by Omir. Just getting his hands up. Didn't really see where the ball was. Saw the big beat him. I think it was Basili, but just got his hands up just to break up what looked like it was going to be a wide open two. Good cut by Couture, and he finishes through the contact. 
beautiful out of bounds underneath. Look at this right here. You can't do it any better. Look at the curl cut uh, by Couture. Pass on point again by Padula. And uh, both these teams, uh, two of the better coached offensive teams in college basketball. You can't do it any better on the curl cut there. Again, ball screen defense and then also pin down a screen defense is going to be key because these teams both run a lot of screen actions with the ball or also off the ball as well too and you know as an opposing coach how much you have to prepare for when you're going up against mike young because the playbook is voluminous pack had it batted away by padula and a takeaway for virginia tech padula off the hesitation the Hokies move it Padula Jacks hits. I talked about Nigel Pack having logo range. Sean Padula has got logo range and one of the quicker releases. If you're not there on the catch and close out with your hands down, uh, he is going to make you pay. One of the better shooters uh, in college. Five shots, five makes for the Hokies. Miller stopped in the lane for two. This is similar to uh, the start that Miami had on the road versus Pitt. Uh, it was Jordan Miller in that first half that created a lot of problems for Pitt. I think they continue to go to him. Uh, he is a difficult matchup for many fours. Basili drills one, and the hot shooting start continues for the Hokies. Last two games, Basili, 24 and 25 points. Uh, he has become a matchup problem. He goes straight up, but commits a foul on Isaiah Wong that will put Wong at the line when we come back. Well, on Saturday, it was 26 assists on 32 buckets for the Hokies. Five dimes on six makes here early on on the road at Coral Gables. It's easy to bundle your home and car insurance at Progressive.com. A couple of seasons ago, Hunter Couture at the end of regulation, forcing overtime for the Hokies. And then last year in Blacksburg, Charlie Moore, half court buzzer beating winner. And yeah, that is how this series has gone. It has, and both these coaches laughed uh, when we talked to them about these close games. And uh, I think for us, uh, obviously as uh, fans watching and calling these games, they're exciting. Uh, both coaches uh, made a joke at the end, though. Uh, we hope it doesn't come down to that. Uh, but certainly it has been entertaining uh, all of their matchups. That Hunter Couture shot. Mike Young admitted to us today. He said, we set the most illegal screen <laughs> you could possibly set. And on top of that, Miami fans will point out, and Mike Young did admit, Hunter Couture had stepped out of bounds. We didn't need to remind Jim Laranega uh, of that. Oh, no, he got a chuckle out of that one, but certainly... Uh, I think a uh, closing out game is going to be key for both of these teams. Oh, nice move by Jordan Miller. He's off to a strong start with a half dozen. One of the most underrated uh, players uh, in the ACC. Uh, he is a guy, as you can see right there, can finish with anybody. I love his defense. And I think he's a guy that they continue uh, to run their offense to right here, runs the floor well. A nice little hesitation and then finish, uh, that's a big time move uh, by Jordan Miller. 15 points, five rebounds, two assists, all of that on 54% shooting. But the George Mason transfer, second year with the Canes. Mike Young agreed with us earlier today, he's playing at an all-conference level. Well, watch how active Miami is in the passing lanes. This is something Mike Young talked about. We have to be strong with the ball. Strong D on MJ Collins. Kane's run. There's Wong, matched up with Mutz. Wong spinning, and he's fouled by Mutz, and will go to the free throw line. Well, Jim Laranega was lamenting some of the late game execution from his group Saturday. That's a game that, that you called at Pittsburgh. Yeah, it really is. But you look at his numbers, uh, they don't lie. Hall of Fame coach, one of the best in the business. His numbers, uh, I, I think the career wins, uh, yes, that's great. But for me, what's been impressive, uh, his player development. Um, I've seen some of these guys. I go back to Shane Larkin, turned him into an all-ACC uh, type player, uh, NBA draft pick. 
uh, the job that he has done uh, with Isaiah Wong. Um, look, uh, when you talk about great coaches, I think it's uh, how they get their players to improve year over year. Uh, he is one of the best in the business at doing that. Got this group off to the great start through the end of December. They began 4-0 in ACC action. They have dropped four of their last seven, so they're trying to avoid a slide coming off that loss over the weekend. Yeah, big game for both these teams. Uh, Virginia Tech resume building, uh, but for Miami, as you said, they're looking to stop uh, this uh, losing streak. Bensley Joseph with a good defense for Miami, and then Wong lost it. Padula picks it and pushes. Both teams very active in the passing lanes. Kick ball by Anthony Walker. We asked Mike Young, what's the difference? He had the seven-game losing streak, but then those back-to-back -back wins, Duke and Syracuse. He said, we started playing good basketball and not looking like a bunch of idiots. <laughs> Always entertaining speaking to both these coaches. Mike Young, uh, love his, or really is his candor. And again, another guy, records, numbers do not lie uh, consistently in the NCAA tournament. And, you know, look, this Virginia Tech team, one of those teams that just, uh, they can beat you in so many ways, really sound defensively. But for me, their spacing, uh, when you watch them run offense, as again, I jinx them right there, they turn it over as I'm talking about their offense. Uh, but they're one of the better offensive teams. But Mike Young was concerned about this right here. Miami, again, they're very active in the passing lanes. Harlan Beverly finished it off off the turnover. It's an 8-0 Miami run. Dribble handoff for MJ Collins, who backs it out amid a trap. Mutt skips. Padula pulls up. Yes, and he is off to a very fine start. Textbook. Skip it, and then a head fake. That's a great job of patience by Padula. He could have easily settled for that three. One, two, pull up jumper, and he's got some of the best footwork setting up for his catch and shoots. That time, though, off the bounce. Seven early ones for the point guard for Virginia Tech. Wong for three. And off the turnover on the inbounds, it's Bensley Joseph getting two more for the Canes. Handling Miami's pressure. Also going to be key in this one. And now Mutz turns it over. Joseph pushes. Wong. Lays it in. I'm going to sound like a broken record. Anytime you play against Miami, you cannot be careless with the ball. They're just going to try to get deflections or tip the ball away from you if you lose concentration. For one of the most sure-handed teams offensively in the country, it's nearly a seven turnover. Hokies have six of them. Miami's on a 15-2 run. Lynn Kidd goes spinning for two and a streak stopper for the Hokies. I like that by Kidd. Again, a don't mess around with it. Grown man move, uh, body on body, and then take the hit, finish through contact. Much needed bucket for Virginia Tech. Fast pace, high scoring start to this one. The first nine minutes in Coral Gables. Miller's matched up with the always excellent defender, Justin Mutz. Miller went to work. Walker on the follow. Draws a foul. Well, how about the defense you mentioned for Miami? They have forced six Virginia Tech turnovers. Harlan Beverly off the steal and lay-in. Bensley Joseph's been involved as well for the Canes. In there, five of the seven games away from Blacksburg and four of the games Without this guy, Hunter I, Couture with the fractured elbow. And I think that's the big one. The four games without Hunter Couture, they're a different team uh, without him in there. I think the biggest thing defensively, uh, he was on Joseph Girard most of the game in that Syracuse win. And look, Joseph Girard is one of the better scorers, not just in the ACC, but in college basketball. And Hunter Couture made life difficult for him in that game. I think held him below double digits uh, for that one. So I think, yes, offensively he's good, uh, but on the defensive end as well, too, he's one of their better on-ball defenders. Mike Young recently asked Hunter Couture how he's feeling. Hunter said 80-85%. Mike Young said to us today that he told him, I'll take you at 25%. We chatted with Hunter after shoot-around. He said 
Sometimes just the unnaturalness of, of how his arm gets bent, that causes pain running off the screens. And Mike Young said he's going to run off about 957 <laughs> screens defending Isaiah Wong tonight. I know, by the way, for the visual, he had ice all over his arm, uh, probably about four or five packs just on uh, that elbow piece. So uh, he's just gutting it out for this Virginia Tech team. He's just too important. And that's twice now, though, a kid uh, in the paint taking his time and then uh, showing off. Nice touch. That time, nice little jump hook. With Mutz on the bench. Kids got the Hokies within three. Wong has an early nine. Gets it back from O'Meara. And there is Couture, one of the great perimeter defenders in the ACC, draped on him. Beverly kicks. Joseph rises and hits. And what a start for Bensley Joseph off the bench. Mike Young said, you know, hey, I know you guys want to talk about a Wong and Nigel Pack, but a Joseph is an X factor for them, and he's absolutely right, playing really well. Uh, but a Virginia Tech will make you pay if you are not there on the catch with their three-point shooters. Uh, it's almost automatic. Great spacing and ball movement again by Virginia Tech. Couture's got six. Hokies ten of thirteen from the floor. The only issue offensively is those half dozen turnovers. Omir over the top of Kid for two. Defense might be optional. Although I may say that jokingly, uh, those are contested shots. Yeah. Uh, both these teams, though, right now are playing at a high level and making some difficult shots. These teams are combined 21 of 29. A Bazzilli miss, and Omir skies for the rebound. And that's a break, though, uh, for Miami. Bazzilli. Came off pretty clean uh, off that pin down. Wong, speaking of tough shot makers. Kid wants it. He's got the height advantage on six foot seven, Norchad O'Meara. Beautiful drop step to the baseline. Footwork, really impressive. And then the patience. You have to stay home if you're Miami. Again, they have four shooters out on the perimeter. So if you go and help, uh, they're going to make you pay. And I think that's a matchup uh, they're going to. I would continue to go to Kid, force Miami to make a decision because every time he's touched it, uh, he has scored. He was big in the second half of the win over Duke last Monday. And now Beverly travels with it as he lost his footing. And it goes back to the Hokies down three. Again, this is great patience. No help coming. Uh, for Miami, the spacing though, I think that's what makes it uh, so important for Virginia Tech, allowing their bigs that time kid to operate. Uh, they have great floor spacing, and you can't help because again, uh, they're such a good three-point shooting team. Excellent offense uh, by Virginia Tech. Justin Mutz returns, and you saw Malajal Poteet, the 265-pound Rice transfer, enter in the front court as well for Mike Young. Watch how Miami hedges on the ball screens. Uh, they do a good job. They're forwards and bigs uh, hedging on any ball screens. Miller showed there on Padula. Shot clock below 10. Padula hits. What a start for Sean Padula. He's got an early 10. If you lock like guards that can make difficult contested shots, you're at the right channel. Sean Padula. My goodness, uh, that's not bad defense. That's a guy that just sized them up, crossed them up, and then raised up over him from deep. Omir just burrows his way to the cup. Collins on the blow by the dump off, and Poteet finishes. He's got a chance at a three-point play when we come back. And if you like offense, this is the spot to be here in Coral Gables. How confident is Sean Padula? And rightly so. He's got 10. And Norchad O'Meara for the Canes. Good one going from the Watsko Center. To the pavilion in Oxford for Oscar Shibwe and Kentucky taking on Ole Miss. Gotta love a good fathead, especially at this time of the year. We are close to February, which means we are close to March, Malcolm Huckabee. Best time of the year. You got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of options, and 
Uh, we got ourselves a pretty good game right here as you take a look at the latest from our guy Joey Brackett's huge game uh, for Virginia Tech. Uh, this would be a huge resume builder uh, for them on the road against the top 25 team in Miami. And certainly, as we've talked about with Miami, they're looking to stop this uh, losing skid that they have. And again, both these teams, how closely contested uh, they've played uh, over really the last three or four seasons. We expect this one to go down to the wire. Late game and second half uh, execution, I think, going to be key in this one. Miller too strong yeah the Hokies looking for what would be their first road win of the season and of course this represents a chance at a quad one win which is valuable currency come the end of the year a duel a miss run down by Wooga Poplar shielding from Couture and up top for Miller beautiful play by Wooga Poplar under control and then had his head up a beautiful lob pass Excellent transition offense uh, by Miami. Key for Virginia Tech. Mike Young said this. Look, uh, our transition defense is going to have to be good against Miami. Couture has it roll off the rim. Hope he's doing a good job here to get back and set up. And Nigel Pack's pass was too tall for Wooga Poplar. And this right here, again, young players, take note. Head up the whole time. You can see uh, what's out there in front of you. Nice little lead uh, alley-oop pass. Again, uh, Miami, one of the better teams uh, in the ACC, pushing the pace off of misses or turnovers. Uh, they do a good job in their trans transition offense. Mutz backing down Miller. Spinning into a double. Good feed for Poteet, who draws the foul. And Jim Laranega disagrees. Yeah, Jim Laranega is hot uh, on the sideline. He felt like his guy was standing straight up. Let's see again. Great patience. Nice pass uh, by Mutz. Mm, yeah, from that angle right there. Now it looks like Norset Omer was straight up. And he is so strong, Omer. Uh, you hit him, you're going to bounce. But it looked like he was standing straight up, I think. Uh, Jim Laranega might have a pretty good argument right there on that one. But again, we were blocked from our angle, and these referees are uh, one of the best crews out there in pretty good position, but Jim Laranega still having a friendly conversation, I would say, with the referee. Because it's <laughs> two on Omir, and he's their best big, and it's a team that doesn't have a lot of size to begin with. Omir's undersized. A guy they have spent time with this year watching all the fouls he commits with him on video after the fact and trying to eliminate one or two dumb ones. And how about this? Padula forces a turnover on the inbound at this end of the floor. And Isaiah Wong says, my bad. Just careless with the ball right there. And back to your point about uh, Omer being out of the game. Look, early on, uh, Virginia Tech has exploited uh, some matchups in the paint. Uh, with Omer out, I'm going right back down low into the post if you get an opportunity. Bazzilli starts driving at the freshman A.J. Casey. Whistled for a foul. And that's key, the block out. Uh, and their loss uh, to Pitt as you take a look at Bazzilli going down, uh, Justin Mutz uh, over the back. Uh, but that was problematic uh, for Miami on the road in Pitt. Pitt had 17 second chance points. Uh, they had issues with their defensive rebounding, something Jim Laranega harped all uh, this morning in their shoot around, said, look, we must rebound uh, against Virginia Tech, limit any second chance opportunities. Two fouls on Mutz. Mike Young keeps him in the game. Joseph driving right past Padula. And now Roger Ayers will head over to the monitor. I think he's just warning both coaches and both teams. I'm not sure what he's going to look at, but something uh, might have happened in between the play. Yeah, let's let's see. I, they might be throwing a fan out of the arena. Now, a couple plays prior to that, there was a pretty vocal fan 
who barked something very, uh, perhaps ill-intentioned, shall we say, toward the officiating crew after the foul on Norchad O'Meara. So, a Miami fan is being escorted out. And again, the cops are coming over here right now. Listen, good job by the officiating crew. They're not messing around. And that, to me, I think you have to. In this day and age, I don't care whether it's players, coaches, fans. If you see something getting out of hand, knock it off right away. And if you feel like it's something that's going to continue, get them up out of here. Really, no place for it whatsoever. And I don't blame them in that situation. You got kids here in the stands. No need for it whatsoever of that type of stuff going on. Hunter Couture gets the friendly roll and powers the Hokies back up by one. Well, back to the basketball. And I'm not sure either team, have they missed in this one? Doesn't I mean, feel like it. I mean, my goodness, we're seeing some high-level offense. We knew coming into this, both teams are very good offensively. Uh, but early on in this first half, uh, these teams are executing at a high level. Miller was shut off. Here's Casey. He needs somewhere to go with the shot clock winding down. It's Wong. Oh, out of the corner. How many times have we seen Isaiah Wong do that? Uh, the difference between a good player and then a next level player making contested shots. Isaiah Wong, uh, one of the best at making a contested threes or twos. Had 11 lead changes in this first half. Bazilli carving out space, missed it with the left hand. Miller attacks. Back out, Joseph. Way off target. Saved by Casey. Wong rescues it back to Casey. Shot clock reset, it shouldn't have. It went all the way back to 30 off the air ball from Joseph. So we will take a timeout with less than four to go in this first half. Isaiah Wong, 12 points. No three tougher than that one for the explosive high octane guard for the Canes. Loved seeing how early he got onto the floor today. Coming off late game scenarios where he had some turnovers and some missed shots that cost Miami down the stretch. I called that game the pit game on the road. Uh, he felt like he let his team down, but you're right. Out here an hour before his team got out here, putting shots up and working on uh, some of his pull-up games that he's one of the best at. That's what the great ones do. Get here early, first one's in the gym, last one's to leave. That's why Isaiah Wong is a guy uh, that's one of the best in college. He's got a game high 12. Miami by two on Virginia Tech here in Coral Gables late first half. Malcolm Huckabee, Mike Monaco, our entire crew with you. Padula searching for space and he throws it right to Wong. Runs with Miller. Wong is blocked by Basili. Great recovery and transition D by Basili. This right here against uh, Isaiah Wong breaking up. Look, looked like it was going to be a deuce. Can't do it any better uh, that time. Still, though, Miami up two. We'll be right back. Big dance tonight? Why don't you ask him? You're right. Big moments call for big crunch. He said yes. That's you crunching the day. Honey, go! I don't like to spend a ton of time shopping, but I like to look good. For me, Poshmark makes that so easy. And whenever I get tired of something, I just relist it back on Poshmark. It's honestly a little addicting. Making some money I can spend, keep my wardrobe fresh. Start of our doubleheader on ESPNU. We will get you to the Big 12 later on. Really important game in the ACC for both these teams. And Isaiah Wong keeps cooking. He's up to 14. Ball screen coverage, again, off of a curl, pin down, or out of bounds, or a guy coming off uh, with the ball off the bounce. You have to do a good job against Miami. They run so many screens uh, for their guards and wings. And Wong runs off so many of those screens. Bazilli, the roll man, he missed another one in tight. Two of six shooting for Grant Bazilli. Miller 
Going off the bounce on Bazzilli, threw him a couple of fakes and gets the roll. I mean, he threw about four up and unders in that <laughs> one move right there. Great patience and footwork, and Jordan Miller uh, continues to play uh, at a high level. He is such a difficult matchup uh, for opposing fours. Padula adjusting and finishing. Uh, how good is Sean Padula? Uh, he is a difficult matchup. Shifty, little hezzy, and then right there, the finish. Big time touch off the glass. Hey, Thursday night, we're featuring a primetime Pac-12 matchup on ESPN in the app. Will Richardson and the Ducks, they've won four of five. They're at the McHale Center in Tucson and take on the fifth-ranked Wildcats, two of the top teams in the conference. Coverage starts 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific. Three-point game, Padula stamps it. John Camden returns, replaces Lynn Kidd. Remember, Norchad O'Meara still out on the Miami bench with his two fouls. A.J. Casey, the freshman, getting a lot more run. Camden clears the Wong miss. And that's pretty good uh, individual defense uh, that time by the freshman. Couture trying to shake Wooga Poplar. Bazzilli drives on Miller. Met a double. Good hands by Casey, and Bazzilli sticks with it. And, Mike, I think that's uh, something Virginia Tech needs to continue to exploit. You talked about it. Uh, Ochat O'Meara is on the bench. Uh, I think uh, they're going to have a size advantage with Basili. No need to settle for jumpers. Let him use his size, get into the paint, force Miami to either double or he's going to get some high-quality looks. Wall drives on Collins. Sixteen in the half for Isaiah Wong with less than a minute to go until the break. Let's see how Virginia Tech counters again. I go back down low to Basili. Let him get isolated uh, on the wing or in the post. Got him on the block. Couture instead for two, and that works pretty well also. Yeah, Jim Laranega calling for a push-off uh, with the refs, uh, but uh, uh, no... Stopping Couture right there. That's just a big-time bully move right there. Uh, got the player off balance and then was able to raise up. This right here, again, Jim Laranega calling for a push-off. Nice footwork and body control uh, by Couture. Again, might have got it out a little bit still, though. Again, this game has been evenly called, and they've been consistent with the whistle. That's a big time step back uh, by Hunter Couture, a guy that is playing at about 85% uh, coming off the injury. And Mike Young said, I'll take him at 35%. Mm -hmm. He is just a warrior, so important to what they want to do uh, offensively and defensively. We talked with Hunter earlier today. He told us the hardest thing about sitting on the bench for those four games was not just being unable to contribute, but the fact that they were all close losses felt like he could have made a difference, and he saw his guys hurting out there, and a streak that, for Hokies fans, you were just waiting for it to end because they knew that this team, a whole lot better than that slide would indicate, and now with him back, they've gotten back to the team you expect from Virginia Tech. I, I think he's one of the most underrated guards uh, in the ACC. Uh, again, last year with Kebe Aluma, yes, he got a lot of attention, rightfully so. But for me, uh, Hunter Couture is one of those guys, Swiss Army Knife, can do a little bit of everything. Three and a half second difference, game and shot clocks. Here's Wong. Got Collins in the air. Short, Bazzilli the rebound. And gets it off. Nearly got it to go. And it sends us to halftime. High scoring Miami by one on Virginia Tech at the break. 45-44, the Canes the lead on the Hokies. We'll check in with the studio after the break and then back to Coral Gables for second half action. 
We welcome you back to Coral Gables and the Watsko Center. Second half on the way after a first half that was eventful and thrilling and high scoring. Fast paced Miami by one on Virginia Tech. Alongside Malcolm Huckabee, Mike Monica with you. Pokey start out with Mutz missing the jam but getting fouled and going to the line. Well, that's a great set play to start off of the second half. Both these teams screen well. A little cross diagonal screen that time by Virginia Tech. And again, both teams, it's so important to communicate on any ball screens or cross screens. Uh, both these teams uh, do a good job with their spacing, but then they run a lot of screens uh, for their wings and guards. And so after Norchad O'Meara, the big man for Miami who averages 13 and 10, Sat for the final 5.45 of the first half with two fouls. Ten seconds in, he saddled with his third. And Jim Laranega keeps him in. Yeah, and that's a big decision for uh, Coach Laranega and staff. Uh, look, he's got to be able to be on the court. Virginia Tech started taking advantage of some post-ups uh, with Omer out of the game. Here's Isaiah Wong, who had those 16. In the first half, Jordan Miller had 10. Wooga Poplar tried to break the house. Omir follows and is fouled. Whoa. They might need to check the screws on this rim. My goodness, Wooga Poplar almost ripped it off. And then uh, Omir afterwards loosened it up some more. A great job by Miami not settling. And they're one of the better offensive teams, offensive rebounding teams because of that guy right there. So strong. That's a big time offensive rebound and putback. And it's three fouls as well on Virginia Tech's Justin Mutz, who was quiet and scoreless. Had a couple of turnovers in the first half for Mike Young. Wong picks it from MJ Collins. And that's his fourth steal of the game. Miller. Wave it off. It is a foul on MJ Collins. A blocking foul. And a foul on the floor. And they're going to say it's not in the act of shooting. Jim Laranega is still lobbying uh, for that to be an and one. But yeah, I think that's right. Again, he had not gone into his shooting motion. He was still gathering himself. Again, we have the luxury of slowing it down, but I do think that was the right call. Hunter Couture matched up with Wong. Off the skip for Poplar. Miller. Mutt stays right with him. Omir underneath. Two more. Jim Laranega says his pursuit relentless. Uh, he is relentless uh, on the offensive glass. Said it reminds him of Kenneth Fareed, the great a former college player and also NBA guy, but certainly uh, Omer, a guy that can get after it on the offensive glass, and then Virginia Tech, though, still running great offense. And what do we got that came onto the court? Is that a piece of gum? <laughs> Not sure what that is. Maybe part of a pom-pom. Or being what, told. I think so. The halftime show, I think that's probably what it was. Oh, we got a tight one here, though. Two point game uh, in favor of Miami. Gum pom pom, eh, it's one of the same. Omira oh, Collin for it. He's battling with Lynn Kidd. Poplar swirls it out. Good rebound, Couture. And a great block out that time by Kidd. Now, again, he didn't get the rebound, but he made sure Omer was not able to get his hands on that one. Dribble handoff for Padula, who had a big first half for the Hokies. Kidd was the last to touch it. That's great team defense by Miami. Again, the heads comes out hard, but the key to that is the rotation on the back end. Uh, that's Jordan Miller uh, with that. Uh, Miami versus Pitt only had one offensive rebound tonight against Virginia Tech. They have seven, mainly this guy right here. Whoa! Northside O'Meara 
doing the Euro step. My goodness, we've talked about his strength that time, showing off the agility uh, with the Euro and finish with the left. He's got 13, three canes in double figures. Kid wanted it. Instead, Basili drives, adjusts, and finishes. I mean, he made that look easy. My goodness, up just mid ear and go and finish. Miller from Nigel Pack. This is back and forth, up tempo, strap in, folks. We got 17 more minutes of this. Both these teams uh, almost over 60% from the floor. Collins quickly attacks, had it roll off, and there's O'Meara carving out space for a rebound. Wong pushes, got stripped and lost it. Good hands by Padula. He leads the Hokies back on the reverse. He is so smooth. I mean, up and under reverse on the other side, just calmly throws it off the glass uh, with Norshad Omer uh, tra chasing him down. Padula's got 15, and Omer is cooking in the second half. He's up to 17 and 9 here in the second half. Well, when I asked him if there's an NBA guy that he tries to mirror his game afterwards, he said Draymond Green. He said, look, I like how he impacts the game with his rebounding defense and doing all the little things. Hunter Katora connects from deep his second three, and the hot shooting continues. Uh, in the first half, I said it. Has anybody missed? Uh, I think it's the same in the second. Uh, my goodness, it's not bad defense. These guys are just hitting uh, some tough, contested shots. Wong no, kid the board. Bazzilli to the basket. That's a beautiful slip of the screen. Basili faked like he was going to come set a ball screen for Couture. And because you have to hedge hard in Miami, he just slipped that screen. A beautiful read by Hunter Couture. Offensive foul on Isaiah Wong. Yeah, Norchad O'Meer said Draymond Green, but he said with a little more scoring. He's got plenty of scoring in this one. 17, Padula's got coming on Saturday. Carolina Duke for the first time this season. Armando Bacon, Kyle Filipowski, they might be the two best players in the conference. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the freshman, uh, Filipowski, playing with a little edge. But Armando Bacot, uh, all that guy does is average a double-double. That's just always uh, entertaining. One of the best rivalries in college basketball, I think in all of sports. Uh, really always fun when those two get together. The tour got a great look for three out of the timeout for Virginia Tech, which leads by one just over five minutes into the second half here in Coral Gables. Yeah, that's a break for Miami. That's a clean look uh, for Couture. And that's one that uh, Jim Laranega definitely does not want to give up too many more of those open looks for him coming off a really nice ball movement. Anthony Walker working on Malaysia Poteet. Shot clock's at five for Bensley Joseph. Walker slipped and finishes through the contact. Pen point passing. Joseph, uh, you can't thread the needle any better right there. Give it to the big high. All he had to do was catch and then go and finish. This is just great offense and recognition, body control and concentration on point. Second foul on Grant Bazzilli, and Anthony Walker stamps a three-point play. Back and forth we have gone. 15 lead changes, and still 14 minutes remaining. Hard hedge on Camden, moves it for Bazzilli. Post entry for Poteet. Working on Walker. Poteet finishes. Excellent patience. And again, back to the spacing for Virginia Tech. Uh, you have to stay home. Again, you got four guys out there that can shoot. 
And so when you go into the post with Virginia Tech, Miami always conscious of the three-point shooting. Beverly down the lane. Now both he and Joseph, I believe, X-Factor guys uh, for Jim Laranega and their staff. Uh, when they're in the game, they don't lose anything uh, when you have well, Isaiah Wong and Nigel Pack on the bench. Kick ball on Vazili and Couture. We talked about Virginia Tech going inside when Norchad O'Meara was out. Elijah Poteet has given seven points in four minutes, and now O'Meara returns. Some more girth in the front court once again for Jim Laranega. Pretty deep rotation for uh, Jim Laranega, and what a luxury he has. Get his guys, a main guy, some uh, rest and not lose much when he goes to his bench. Good defense as well from Poteet. He's giving good minutes for the Hokies. Basili starts to back down Walker. Basili with a chance at a three point play. Uh, easy to see uh, why he was player of the week and the HCC. Uh, we talked about his three-point shooting. This right here, though, I think he can do a lot of damage right here. Put him out on the wing and then let him work his way down. Again, Miami chose not to come and help. And uh, he's a guy, we talked about it at the top. Last two games, uh, he has been 20-plus. Can't stamp it. Beverly the rebound. Dula's got 15, basili has got 14, Couture with 13 for Mike Young. Locked at 61 here in the second half. Omir, back iron. He's only made two career three-pointers in three years. And uh, Jim Laranega turned to his bench. And again, he gives his guys a lot of freedom as you take a look at the deflection, but that's probably not where he wants Omir doing his damage. Setting screens at the three-point line like that. That's more like it for Norchad O'Meara. And a bump on Basili, who gets saddled with the foul on the baseline. That's his third with 12 minutes to go. And the student section, which has come out in force here. A really good turnout. Uh, but we got ourselves locked in another tight one between these two teams. Locked at 61. We'll be right back. Basketball top 15 showdown Kansas and Iowa State noon Eastern and Ames followed by Auburn Tennessee ranked second in the country then it's number one Purdue number 21 Indiana and then we told you about at Cameron North Carolina and Duke 630 Eastern at our Saturday showcase a lot of options early though looking forward to that North Carolina Duke one that's always a fun matchup how about though Zach Eady of uh, the year he is having almost unguardable one-on-one -on -one. and plenty of college hoops this time of year and Zach Eady is the front runner if not assuredly the national player of the year Bensley Joseph swirls out a triple that's a pretty good look off a nice read uh, by Isaiah Wong. Joseph upset that ball went around a couple times and then rimmed out. He's played so well he's got increased minutes. Nigel Pack had his minutes shaved out in the first half as Hunter Couture hits a third three. And him and uh, Sean Padula, if you watch them come off pin downs, I would hate to try to lock and trail on them. Uh, if you are not there on the catch, uh, they have such a quick release, and they do a great job moving without the ball and then curling tight off of screens right up into their jumpers. Poplar. <laughs> Looks like MJ Collins still down. And Roger Ayers is headed over to the scorer's table. He wants to have a look, I believe, at that left elbow of Wooga Poplar. Now, I think that's a basketball move. Now, again, he got hit. Now, I can tell you, uh, in my playing days, I got hit plenty of times. You hate to see it. Obviously, we hope that young man is okay. I think it's more the intent. If it's a basketball move, he was trying to do a head fake, 
and then just happened to catch him in uh, the face. But again, I don't think it was a malicious uh, elbow. And again, I think it's intent and whether or not it's a basketball move from the initial right here. Looks like, look, he comes to a jump stop jumper, head fake, and then he's trying to go over. Yeah. Again, I think that's the explanation right there. And I think that's the key intent and then whether or not it's a basketball move. But Poplar, he is trying to go over. That's something you'll see players work on that move all the time. Jump stop and then make a basketball move. The same words you use, Malcolm Huckabee, from Roger Harris, it's a basketball play. Yeah, he's a veteran official. And again, I like, they go take a look at it. They don't take a lot of time. They explain it to the coaches. And again, it's, I think, the key word is he was in his cylinder and it's a basketball move. A uh, good job, again, uh, we got a veteran officiating crew. Uh, don't take a lot of time with it. Give everybody explanations. They may not like to hear it, but then let's play on. A good job of them not taking too much time on that one. And hopefully MJ Collins is all right for the Hokies. 11 minutes to go. Virginia Tech by one on the road. Hokies off back-to-back -back wins. Miami ranked 23rd in the country off the loss on the road Saturday. Miller commits the foul defending Mutz. And Mike, I like that play. Uh, by Virginia Tech. Now, Mutz, again, he is a guy that's so unselfish. I think sometimes in these games, look, you want him to be a little bit more selfish. If he has a matchup uh, that he likes, try to get him isolated, let him go to work, see if he can continue to draw some fouls. Kid on the block, spinning on O'Meara, and then Kid walked with it. Right idea by Kid again. O'Meara with three fouls. Yeah, he, he lifted up that pivot foot right there just ever so slightly. But I like the idea, though, by Virginia Tech. Go at O'Meara. He's got three fouls. He's going to be less aggressive playing defense in the post. Joseph calls for the ball screen. Wants somewhere to go and finds Wong. O'Meara on the block, barreling into Kidd. Rebound Padula. And Kidd has really done a nice job against O'Meara. That time, great individual post D. He's also done the nice job. He hasn't gotten rebounds, but he's kept O'Meara uh, from going completely crazy on the offensive glass, which is so key when you play Miami. Mutz drives and scores. Six points for Justin Mutz, and they've all come in the second half. Wong hasn't scored yet this half. And it rolls off the rim. We've got a foul on the rebounding action. Norchad O'Meara was battling on the boards. And he is so difficult uh, to keep off the offensive glass. Again, Kidd, for the most part, has done a pretty decent job right here. Couture, uh, again, one of the underrated defenders in the ACC. Good contest. Uh, but yeah, O'Meara, he got his arms around him. Sometimes that's all you can do with him. He is so relentless on the glass. He runs into Camden, who gets called for a block. And when you get a block on Norchad O'Meara, it hits different. He's <laughs> six foot seven, 248 pounds. And we were talking with a strength coach uh, of Miami. And again, he is uh, their strongest player. And I think the key with that one right there, he was falling over um, before he got there, trying to sell that. Miller bangs with Mutz. Rebound Camden. Neither team is led by more than eight. It has been tight. The lead has changed hands. Padula on Corks. Camden kept it alive, but Poplar the board. And that's a break for Miami. Again, they got to do a better job communicating on screens, pin downs uh, for Couture and Padula. 
Uh, you have to be there on the catch. Joseph off the bounce on Padula. Does a nice job staying in front. Poteet hedges. Mutz picks it off. The Hokies run. Padula. Underneath to Mutz. Patience. Padula could have easily jacked that first three right there. Great patience and get a higher percentage shot. Uh, these guards, this backcourt uh, of Virginia Tech, uh, they're defending and then in transition, they're making great reads right here. Justin Mutz with the pass. Patience by Padula, give it back. And right now, Virginia Tech up five on the road. Marlins first base coach, tight end David Njoku in the building. Gabby Sanchez, big league all-star in the majors, one of our colleagues here at ESPN, and Braxton Berrios. Boy, he was electric. They are all here for a really good one between Virginia Tech and Miami. Eight minutes to go in the second half. Malcolm Huckabee, it has not disappointed. It has not, and a great atmosphere, a great crowd here in Miami, and it's coming down uh, to the wire again. Great post-entry pass, though, that time. Jordan Miller, a uh, great seal uh, by O'Meara, and he's got the greatest set of hands. I'm surprised football team has not called that young man right there. Uh, he is uh, not going to miss too many things that are thrown at him. And Joku-esque, he's got 19 now to lead all scores. Padula drives and turns it over. Got caught in the air. Long attacks. Poplar moves it. Pack. Tied up. You cannot run your transition offense any better. Dribble drive, kick out, pass, and then extra pass that led to a wide open three. Poteet is stripped and fouled by Nigel Pack. Well, Quick this, five points for Miami out of that timeout. Well, it's a thing of beauty when Miami is moving the ball. Uh, Jim Laranega happy with that ball. Canes on Saturday afternoon, 3 Eastern. They square off with Clemson, who trails right now over on ACC Network at Boston College. And next Wednesday, the Hokies, they host BC at 7 Eastern in Blacksburg. It's going to be an interesting finish uh, to this uh, ACC season, a lot of teams uh, bunched up at the top half. And you got some battles uh, down uh, in the middle, bottom half of the ACC as Poteet, who has really been solid uh, for uh, Virginia Tech and Mike Young, uh, misses the first free throw. He had made his first three. He's a good foul shooter for a big guy. 71% for his career, and he splits. Well, key in this uh, game really has been uh, Virginia Tech, in particular Padula and Couture. Uh, their defense on the wings uh, right now, Miami shooting 23% from the three-point line. They've only made three uh, in this game. Uh, credit to wings and guards for Virginia Tech. They've done a nice job contesting. And Couture strips Poplar, who collides with Bazilli, and the foul on Miami after some great Virginia Tech defense on the perimeter, to your point. Yeah, I mean, right on point. I mean, they've done a good job. Individual plays right here. Again, this is just great individual play. And then a, a, a Couture comes over, help not over helping, but gets his hand and forces a turnover. And uh, they've been a really nice job in particular in the second half, forcing Miami into some difficult shots and then creating uh, some turnovers. It was only the sixth foul on Miami. Boy, how good is Couture? He's got to deal with Isaiah Wong. Mike Young said, I'd prefer if I didn't play him on Wong because he's so good off the ball, as we just saw. Now he's off target, wide and left, the rebound down to Miller. Pack pulls up for the lead. I said it at the tip. He's got logo range. You have to be with him as soon as he crosses half court. 
Uh, he's got unlimited range. That time a breakdown in transition D by Virginia Tech. He's one of the best three-point shooters in the country. Turnover Hokies. Couture couldn't connect with Mutz. Uh, right here, though, Nigel Pack, almost from the Miami logo, uh, did not touch the rim. And just when I was praising Virginia Tech's three-point field goal defense, uh, there's a breakdown in transition. He saw the frustration and the reaction of Hunter Couture, who knows that much base for Nigel Pack is a problem. They run him off a screen. Hits again! What a great atmosphere and game we got going on right here. Mutz in the lane, pivoting and scoring. A much needed two for the Hokies who have it down to three. And I've said it earlier, at times he's really more of a passing big. I think at times he's almost too passive. Uh, you like to see him be more aggressive. That's a great move by Justin Mutz. He's got 10 in the second half. Miller hanging in the air. Five-point Miami lead, five to go in Coral Gables. Basili answers. And a timeout, Mike Young. You cannot ask for a better played offensive game. Uh, right here, uh, Nigel Pack, logo range. Foot on the Miami logo, nothing but the bottom of the net. Uh, but then on the other side, the ACC Player of the Week, Grant Facilli answers with a three. We are in line for another fun finish. 76-74, under five to go in a rocking atmosphere in Coral Gables. How good has this one been? Great offense on both sides. Virginia Tech is shooting 66% from the floor for the game. <laughs> I mean, you would think that uh, Miami's not playing defense. That has not been the case. Both these teams shooting at a high level, just making some contested shots. Sean Padula is hugging Nigel Pack, searching for space. Now Wong stops, swirls it out, and a big rebound, Grant Bazzilli. A nice job, again, blocking out uh, that time Mutz. Although he doesn't get the rebound, the key thing uh, when you're going up against Omer, he's such a good offensive rebound. You just want to make sure he doesn't get it. Isaiah Wong whistled for a foul, defending Hunter Couture. That's two on Wong. And seven on Miami. So the one and one coming for Hunter Couture, a 72% free throw shooter for his career. And that was a frustrating foul. Again, I talked about Hunter Couture. Yes, uh, he is one of the better offensive players, underrated defensive player. Uh, to me, uh, he is a guy, one of the better on-ball uh, defender. He's just a pest. We talked about the job he did against Joseph Girard of Syracuse, one of the better scorers, not just in the ACC, but in the country. Mike Young said that the work they did as a team on uh, Joe Girard, Hunter Couture deserved 75% of that. All the credit that he got, and he's had to face Isaiah Wong here in this one. And uh, oh, by the way, he's at about 85%. Yeah. <laughs> and he's continued to shoot it well from deep. That's what he's done his last two games. He is three of six from long range in this one, 17 points. Now, Mike Roberts goes over to explain something to Jim Laranega. There was some sort of spill in front of the Virginia Tech bench that got wiped up between these free throws and some explanation coming the way of Jim Laranega. And in any event, it doesn't phase Hunter Couture. We are tied at 76. Coming up on four to go here at the Watsko Center. Miller, quick first step, blocked by Mutz. My goodness, a quick first step by Jordan Miller. Looked like he had Mutz beat, 
and then Mutz out of nowhere. What a recovery and block. Bazzilli. Oh, he missed it. He's missed a few in close today. Pack streaks to the basket, and Miami leads. And Mike, that's all set up because he's knocked down two deep threes. They're thinking he's going to pull up. Little hezzy, and then he gets to the basket. Heads up play by Nigel Pack. All 11 for him since halftime. Padula, short. Ball screen coverage. Let's see how Virginia Tech decides to play ball screens. Long's looking for another. He goes off the bounce on Couture. Stays right with him. Shot clock below 10 for Nigel Pack. Off a screen. Yes! Boy, he's good. Mutz right back, missed it underneath, out of control. Here come the Kings. Pack wants another. Oh! He's unconscious! I mean, there are heat checks, and then there are men on fire. Nigel Pack, unlimited range. My goodness, this guy is on fire. Miami with the eight-point lead. Have all come in the last 507. He's got 17 of the last 19 Miami points, and the Canes lead by eight. We featured him in the open. His last four games. 52% from the three-point line, 15 to 29. I'd say that percentage is going to go up a little bit. He's five of six in this game. Bazzilli short, can't answer. And Miami's got it with all the momentum and with that eight-point lead. Well, obviously, uh, Virginia Tech, again, uh, defending Nigel Pack. Uh, really, some of those were just contested tough shots. Uh, one was a breakdown. And Miller turns it over and that's one thing you don't want to do if you're Miami uh, can ill afford now the only good thing about that it's not a live ball turnover allowing Virginia Tech to go on transition you're able to set your D up uh, but certainly you don't want to have lost possessions if you're Miami Sean Petula goes spinning and nearly got it to go he will settle for two free throws you know just back to Nigel Pack we asked Jim Laranega today, is there any sort of shot with his range that you're uncomfortable with? He looked at us like we were crazy. He said, oh, gosh, no. No, no, absolutely not. And the Virginia Tech coaching staff, Kevin Giltner, who had the, the scout for Miami, he said to his team today at shoot-around, you have to pick up Nigel Pack pretty high, meaning close to mid-court, because he will pull from anywhere. Well, and the tip, again, I said it, he's got a logo range. Again, he's hit a couple from the Miami logo you have to pick him up as soon as he crosses a half court. And they've done a good job, Miami. Credit them. Uh, once he got hot, they kept looking for him. Uh, actually, the job recognizing their guy is on fire. Omir is fouled by Bazzilli. So that's four on Grant Bazzilli with 144 remaining. Hey, coming up 9 Eastern over on ESPN, we'll take you to Oxford, Mississippi for Oscar Shibwe and Kentucky against Ole Miss. Now, one thing to remember with Miami here down the stretch, Saturday against Pitt, they led by eight late in that game, and Pitt closed on an 11-0 run. Jim Laranega's team led by eight with about 2.15 to go and lost. Omir splits. I think the key thing, I said it in that last uh, possession, the turnover by Jordan Miller. Yep. Listen can't turn the ball over that was problematic for them late in that game at Pitt but they're at home they can ill afford turnovers uh, in these possessions Bazzilli had it go in and out Omir clears it Pokey's looking for a trap long escapes and Poplar backs it out
Pack, step back. Too strong, mutts the rebound. Virginia Tech down seven. Minute left in the second half. Mutz kicks, Couture moves it. Collins spins it out. Omir the rebound and Padula fouls. Awesome, oh, good looks for the Hokies here in the last couple of minutes. You can't ask for a better look if you're Mike Young. Off a of ball movement right here in transition. They had Miami spaced out. Excellent extra pass uh, by a Couture, and uh, that's a wide open look. You'll live with that if you're Mike Young. Right now, it's going to come down, though, to Miami, uh, for Miami. Free throws, and then obviously handling any pressure or traps uh, that Virginia Tech throws at them. Omir has missed two in a row now. Still 45 seconds left. And a foul right in front of the Virginia Tech bench. And uh, Jim Laranega not happy. That's a really poor foul. Two things. Stops the clock and puts a very good free throw shooter on the line. And then now gives them a chance uh, to set their defense up. And uh, back to your point, uh, Omir that time had a chance to give it up to the guards before he got fouled. Got to be heads up in that situation. Get it out of your hands. Get it into the guys that are probably better percentage free throw shooters. Couture is good on the first. He's four for four at the line here in this one. Bensley Joseph, the best perimeter defender for Miami, comes back and replaces Wuga Poplar. And I think the other thing, Joseph, really uh, one of their top ball handlers as well, too. So again, you know Virginia Tech's going to pressure. Uh, the key thing now, Virginia Tech, if there's no safety back, uh, you don't want to get beat long. Miller nearly got stripped by Padula. Now Wongo searching for somewhere to go. Takes it over the timeline. And Joseph is fouled. He's a 68% free throw shooter, so one of the guys you do target if you're Virginia Tech. And that's a great job of scouting by Virginia Tech. They realize Pack, Isaiah Wong, strong free throw shooters. Trap, get the ball out of their hands and then get it in the guy uh, that has a lower percentage. Again, that's a great job of scouting, but then also these guys understanding who's out on the court. Get it out of the good free throw shooter's hands. Put somebody that you want at the free throw line on the line. Sophomore with his first trip to the line tonight. And he makes the first. It's a six point game. 33 and a half seconds to go. Makes both. The key for Miami in this situation. Communicate any screens. You do not want to foul. Padula high arcing and he got fouled by Bensley Joseph. So Sean Padula goes to the line for three, and he's a fabulous free throw shooter. Yeah, that's just a breakdown. Again, you have to be able to play D uh, without fouling. Let's see if he got him. Mm, yeah, look, it's enough. Comes into his landing yeah, space. It's, it's enough of contact for the refs to have to make a decision. Should not even come to that. Very close. Uh, again, you don't want to give up a four-point play in that situation. Uh, but there's contact, and again, uh, referees are put in a situation you do not want to put them in of uh, this situation. Let's see closer look. Yeah, I mean again, that's a foul <laughs> that impacts the trajectory and his flight uh, of the ball right there. And that's right in front of the referee. It's an absolute no brainer entitled to that landing space. Padula has made the first two. He is five of five at the line in this one. 87% for his career. He's got it down to five. Gets all three. So it's a four point game, 26.3 seconds left. Bazilli goes out with his four fouls. Lynn Kidd comes in. Miami does have two timeouts if it needs them. Here's the key. Right now, Virginia Tech, okay, looks like Kidd's going to go back, play safety. Uh, you just don't want to get beat long and give up a layup. 
They foul Omir very quickly. Lynn Kidd sprung to him and fouls the 70% free throw shooter. And that's a great job again of Virginia Tech realizing what they want to do. A keep Nigel Pack, Isaiah Wong off the free throw line. Uh, put uh, Omer back on the free throw line again. Not a good a, as good a free throw shooter uh, as your backcourt. He has missed his last two here in the second half. The junior from Nicaragua, Arkansas State transfer. Misses another. Closing out games again. Free throws in this one right here and. Uh, these end of game situations teams again practice these all the time who you want to put on the free throw line now back defensively make or miss uh, for Miami you cannot foul five point game Padula to the basket and what do we have one official started to signal travel and now they both do traveling is called on Sean Padula Now this is great team defense right here again. Uh, you can't do it any better gets beat on the initial and then you got three guys coming over there. Yeah, he should shuffle his foot. A uh, great job of help side D uh, right now again. Nobody's long uh, for Virginia Tech. Pack in the corner. Got it free to wall and Padula bumps him. It was the sixth Padula turnover in this game. And now Wong, an 83% free throw shooter, is going to the line. Yeah, great job that time of breaking the press, but also, too, taking some clock off. That's what you want to do if you're Virginia Tech. Go for that steal out of the first trap. They don't get it. Wong extends it a little bit, takes off a little bit more time. Let's see if Miami stays up and gives a little bit of pressure. Yeah. Joseph still up there. Now Keithing. Ten seconds. You just do not want to foul if you're Miami. Much is blocked by Omir. Poplar. Exclamation. Now the celebration can start for the Canes. What a finish. Well, we talked about the offense, uh, but it was the defensive stop at the end that put uh, the finishing touches on this game. Omer with the denial of Justin Mutz. Big time block. Kept it in play. And Mike, uh, we went back to uh, the beginning of this game. We talked about Miami's issues closing out games. Uh, they did a masterful job offensively, but make no mistake about it. Nigel Pack caught fire uh, late in the second half. And then defensively, they were sound enough uh, to defend the three-point line and the paint. Uh, they get a win against a very tough Virginia Tech team. Miami is